What's going on, everybody? I'm Chris Noggle, and this is the Money School Podcast. But this is episode 250. This is a milestone for me, which means this is going to be an extra special podcast that you need to listen to. So if you're thinking about leaving, don't. You need to hear this because this podcast, I'm going to tell you how you're going to succeed. Yeah, I'm literally going to give you the secret of success. I'm going to tell you exactly how you can succeed at anything you want in life, but I'm also going to tell you how you can fail. We're going to literally look at this podcast episode as a way for you to understand the difference between success and failure and what you need to do to succeed and what you can do to fail if that is what you want. And I know it is not because I know that this podcast is a special one. And I want to give a a big shout out to all my listeners, all my followers, all my fans, every one of you. Thank you for being there. It's been a long journey with this podcast, 250 episodes, and I have not taken one cent in advertising dollars, not one cent from sponsors, because this is about you. This podcast is about me giving and me helping you solve your problems. So let's dive right in. Success. It's something we all want. It's something we all strive for. It's something we think about often. We want success. But what is success? Well, it's different for everybody. My version of success is different than your version of success. I mean, to some people, success is living in a beautiful home, having a paid off mortgage, having a paid off car in the driveway and being able to live the simple life. Some of you, it's living in a mansion, having a private jet, a helicopter and a lot of freaking money. It doesn't matter what success is to you. It really doesn't matter. But what does matter is what does it take to be successful? I have literally studied this and I continue to be a student of this study. I have followed so many other successful people and I've also followed what made them successful. And and through this journey, I've also listened to a lot of other podcasts, a lot of other YouTube videos and a lot of other books that all talk about the secret that I'm going to uncover for you today. The secret is really not a secret at all. Matter of fact, that secret to success has been around since really the early days, the beginning. But the secret's always going to be called a secret because it really applies to only 2% of us. That's right, 2%. Why not 90%? Why not 100%? Why does it have to be a secret? Well, it doesn't but it's only going to land for about 2% of the population. We could round that up to 5%, but let's just focus on the 2% and how I derived at that number. Well, that 2% number, if you think about it, are the successful folks out there. It's roughly about 2% of the population. And we can define success. If we lower our barometer, we can call that 5%. But really, it's just 2%. So how and what did those 2%, what did those folks do that the 98% did not do? Well, let me pause right there. I want to I wanna talk about the majority of the people and what they want. And I want you to think about where you fit in this. The majority of people in the world want security. They, that's it. They want security. They want to feel secure. They don't want to have to worry about things. They they need that sense of security, which that sense of security comes with something else. It comes with that person that's seeking security to not go out there and take risk. They're not risk takers. When you're finding and wanting security, are you going out there and taking all the risks? No. So you know what? Let's start there. Who are the risk takers, really? Are they the ones that go out there and do all the risky stuff? Are they the ones that go after their dreams, no matter what people say, no matter how dangerous it is, and no matter how much they lay on the line? Or is the risk taker the person that never goes after their dream? Now, this is an interesting one. It really is. Because the person that takes all the risk and stakes it all to chase their dream, their worthy idea, their goals, what happens? What happens when someone goes out there and lays it all on the line to go after what it is they dream about. I don't care if it's being a professional athlete. I don't care if it's going out there and putting it all on the line to build the company that they dream about. I don't care if it's the person that goes out there and lays it all on the line to chase love. They are risking a lot, a lot. 
all of it. They're putting it all on the line. And what happens? Well, how many of you guess that they become the 2%? They become the 2%. The ones that literally risked it all to find a solution, to create something, keyword, create something that serves the 98%, that solves a big problem for the 98%. Think about that. The risk taker puts it all on the line and literally solves a problem for the 98 percenters, the security people, the 98 percent that just conform to what life gave them, what life was easy enough to just provide for them. They went the easy path. The, they went the secure path. They went the path of least resistance. They followed the path most followed. In other words, they conformed to what everybody else's ideas were. They conformed to what everybody else's failed dreams were because the path most followed is always the path of the 98% because it's the majority that wanted security. Now the two percenters, they followed the path never beaten down or the path least followed. And that path was tough. It was riddled with failure. It was riddled with hard times. It was riddled with long days. But through those challenges, those failures, through those struggles, those 2% that went down that path least followed, they went after their dreams. They risked it all to create the life they wanted, to create the dream that they couldn't stop thinking about, to create the idea that they got and that they never forgot about. So who is the risk taker? Well, if you really think about it, the risk taker is the one who never went after their dreams. The risk taker is the one that never chased their goals because it was too hard. The risk taker is the one that seeked the security and therefore never took the risks to step outside and be extraordinary. So who was the real risk taker? It was the person that just wanted security because the 2%, those are the wealthiest folks. Those are the wealthiest families that have ever lived. Those are the ones who took and staked it all on their idea, their creation, their dream and their goals. And because of that, they are the ones that created things that we look at every single day. And you know, I wanna, I wanna preface something and we are getting to what makes the difference between success and failure. I already told you, but I'm gonna sum it up as we get deeper into this podcast. I wanna go through some of the people that have changed the world. And I want you to think about them. And I've got a couple of them written down here, and I want you to think about who these folks are. Alexander Graham Bell. What was his idea? What was his dream? What was his worthy cause that he risked everything on? The telephone didn't look like this, but the telephone. Back then, he had an idea that he could literally have voice and, and words and communications travel through a wire. And when he told people about this, what do you think they said? Ah, that's a stupid idea. That's the silliest things. I mean, that that would just make for a bunch of people that don't know how to communicate if they're just always talking on a phone. That'll never happen, right? I want you to think about that. I want you to think about Alexander Graham Bell. He had an idea, a dream. He had a goal of changing the way we communicate and bringing people closer through a wire that we now know of as the telephone. And some of you are old enough to remember when telephones were literally a headset that you held connected with a wire to the, the phone jack or the, the base, which then was connected to another wire that was connected to a series of wires that connected the world. One idea changed the world. But let's keep going on because there's lots more of them. Lots more of them. Einstein. Einstein came up with lots of inventions, lots of ideas, lots of dreams. And he was met with fierce scornment. He was met with people laughing at him, telling him his ideas were stupid. Same thing as Alexander Graham Bell. And then what happened? Well, Einstein changed the world. And I do want to preface because you know what I do? I teach people how to be the bank against the grain, against the normal traditional financial world. I teach you how to be your own bank by utilizing a little known secret called the infinite banking concepts. And a lot of times I'm ridiculed. I'm looked down on, I'm, I'm hated on by financial advisors that follow the path most followed, the 98%. This is the only way, this is the way it's always been done. Or is it? Not trying to make this about IBC, but I'm just trying to get you to see what I'm putting out there. Let's keep going. How about the person that invented the sewing machine? 
I mean, come on, that had to just take off, right? No. People totally, totally went against that. The person that created the sewing machine created something that would change the world forever, would change the way our clothes are made, would change the way everything's made. But they were faced with severe rejection. They were faced with people rejecting them, laughing at them. They were, they had people say, that's never going to work. You're, that's the stupidest thing. But it wasn't just the sewing machine. It was also the typewriter. Look it up. Look up the typewriter. People thought it was the stupidest thing ever. Who's going to spend that much money so that you can type out a letter when you can just write it down? I mean, that's the dumbest thing ever. Was it? The typewriter changed everything. The typewriter is now a keyboard. And the keyboard allows us to communicate through not wires anymore, but through Wi-Fi, through just energy in the air. All these were ideas. All these things were created by the risk taker who was willing to lay it all on the line, to risk it all, to make and create their worthy idea, their dream. Christopher Columbus, you know the story on that. Most people told him he was crazy. He'd never make it. He'd die. Well, he didn't. He changed the world forever. Oh, we could keep talking. We could talk about the first car, the first steamship, and all the rejection they all faced. But really, let's just sum all this up with all the greats in the world, including Jesus Christ. What happened? Well, all of them that had a worthy idea had haters. And all those haters ridiculed them. All those haters talked down about them. All those haters tried to get the 98% to conform that that was not a good idea. And some of them, the worthy ideas, died on the cross, died by being burned alive, died by being stoned and whipped and died fighting for their cause, their dream, their worthy idea. And what happened? Look around. They changed the world. You know, and Steve Jobs, I've read his book so many times. I've watched the movies about him. You know what he said? It's the crazy ones, the rebellions. It's the crazy ones, the rebels that change the world. The risk takers, folks. The risk takers are the two percenters, but the risk takers are the ones that take the least amount of risk because I can't understand how people don't see that to be great to be great is to be misunderstood. That is the only path. To be great requires you to fail. To be great requires you to step out of security and step into the role that your idea is yours and you will literally go and take any risk to make sure that that idea happens, to make sure that your dream, your creation happens because that dream will change the world, will change and solve people's problems. Being your own bank solves millions of people's problems, but it's fought with severe rejection. It's fought with haters saying, that's a scam, that'll never work. That's the stupidest thing. It's fought with some of the gurus out there fighting it down, saying that is the worst place you can put your money. All these other people from Alexander Graham Bell to Christopher Columbus to the person that invented the sewing machine, the typewriter, I've got them all written down, to the person that invented the steamship, the first car, right down to the carpenter who went by the name of Jesus. They all changed the world because they never gave up on their worthy idea. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. So success. I told you at the beginning of this podcast, episode number 250, I would literally lay out what it takes for you to succeed. I would give you the secret to success. And here it is. As one of my favorite people in the world would say, success is a person who focuses on a worthy idea and never stops thinking about it. Earl Nightingale, the pursuit of your worthy idea. Success can only happen if you create, because the, the opposite of creation 
is conformity. There really is only two paths, success or fail, succeed or fail. And what is the difference between the two, succeeding and failing? The difference is to succeed, you must create. And to fail, you must conform. You must chase everybody else. And conformity is an interesting thing, and we've seen it more now than ever before in our lives. We've seen massive conformity. Now, I know it's a bad word today, but just think about conforming. Think about your story, your journey that you've been on. It's probably not much different than mine. You've had all sorts of ideas in your life, all sorts of great ideas, all sorts of ideas that were unique to you, and all sorts of ideas and dreams and goals. What has happened? Have you realized those dreams, those ideas? Have you created what you wanted your life to look like? I call it the perfect day. Are you living your perfect day? Matter of fact, do you know what your perfect day looks like? Because in order for you to live your perfect day, you must be able to articulate your perfect day. From the second you wake up and open your eyes and take your breath in the morning to the moment you close your eyes and fall asleep at night, what does your perfect day look like? I'm, I'm asking you a question. I can tell you exactly what my perfect day looks like, but my perfect day changes all the time. And yours should too. I spent the time, it was about a month. I would never, ever forget it. I met with a mentor, somebody I wanted to work with, somebody that I really wanted to help me way back when. And I remember that first meeting, I was so excited about it. And, I, and that person, his name was Kent, said to me, he said, why do you work as hard as you do? And I thought I had the answer. Oh, because I want to make a bunch of money because i that's just how I do things. I, I, I want to do this and I want to do that. And he said, no, 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 no. Let me ask the question again. Why do you work as hard as you do? And he kept, I kept giving him an answer and he kept shooting it down. He said, why do you work as hard as you do? And I kept doing it and I was getting frustrated. I'm like, dude, that's why I work as hard as I do. What's wrong with my answer? And he says, wrong. I can't work with you. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa what do you mean? What, what did I do wrong? And then I went into the, the boo-hoo, me, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And he said, no, you didn't do anything wrong. But he said, until you can tell me what your perfect day looks like, I can't help you. I can't coach you. I can't mentor you. I can't change a thing in your life until you in your mind know what your perfect day looks like. Therefore, what do you think I did? I got busy. I started writing things down. I started taking all the notes like I always do. I wrote down my worthy ideas, my perfect day. What did it look like? From the second I woke up, what did I smell? What did I feel? Who was I with? What did I see? And then as I got out of bed, what did I go to? Probably the bathroom. And what did it look like? What did it smell like? And through that entire day, page after page after page of detail, I articulated that perfect day. I knew exactly what the kitchen looked like. I knew what kind of coffee there was. I knew when I was going to have coffee. I knew the freedoms I was going to have. I knew that that day I could either go and create or I could just go out and surf because my perfect day included water and ocean and an ocean breeze that came through nice silky linen white well, drapes, I think they would call them, that were in front of all glass windows. You see as I created this perfect day, I created every moment of that perfect day. I created every image of that perfect day, every smell, every touch, every feel of that perfect day. So why was it so hard to create what my perfect day looked like? Because I couldn't miss anything. The cars in the garage, the color of the cars in the garage, of which today I have all those cars in the garage. And now I'm upgrading those cars because my day is changing. My day is evolving because I will never arrive at the perfect day. My day will always change to be the better version of my perfect day. What is the better version of you and your perfect day? Can you tell me what that is? And until you can, you don't know what it is. So what are you really working toward? That your perfect day. And your perfect day starts with an idea. It starts with you creating your perfect day. Do you see I'm taking you on a journey? What is success? Success is creation. That is it. What is the difference between success and failure? Well, failure is conforming to somebody's failed idea, somebody's failed reality, somebody's failed financial plan. Somebody's plan that isn't yours is failing. And I defined it. I've got the perfect definition. Failure. What is failure? Well, First, we must understand our success or our failure has nothing to do with the 
opinions of others. So first off, I wrote that down. Our success or failure has nothing to do with the opinions of others. Let me pause there. How many of you think your success has to do with how other people view your life, how other people view your dreams, how other people view your ideas? Wrong. Your success and or your failure has nothing to do with the opinions of others. It has everything to do with your opinion of yourself. Your success lies within, not without. Your success lies within you. What is success? It is the opinion of how you view yourself day in and day out. So success, does it have to be a big fancy house, a big fancy car, like all that stuff? Absolutely not. If you are happy with yourself and your life, success has been had. If you have chased your worthy idea, your dreams, and if your dreams are different than mine, that's okay. You're a success. But failure, failure, security, conforming with what everybody else does, failure is conformity. I wrote this down. The failure, i.e. the person who fails, the failure is a person who never tries to succeed. I want you to think about that. Failure is the person who never tries to succeed because succeeding requires too much risk and too much risk is too much for that person to handle because they just want simple. They just want security. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Success is creation. Failure is conformity. Failure is you not trying. You not going out there and putting it all on the line for your worthy idea, for your dream. That is failing at its truest form. Success is the person that strives to achieve and create their worthy idea that they planted in their mind any point in time in their life. And your worthy idea, when you succeed at that idea, you will change the idea and you will strive for another idea and another idea and another idea. And people who play it safe, they take and face the biggest risk of all. Let me define that. Let me give you a story and I'm going to give you a couple stories here. And I want you to try to remember these stories. This is episode 250. You need to remember stories. There was a woman, she fell in love with a man and she was so deeply in love with this man. She could, she could see her whole life with this. She could see that her love of this man made her life complete. And that man broke her heart. And this woman was crushed, devastated, didn't even want to go on with life. And she said to her mother, she said, mom, I'm never going to love again. I can't ever go through this pain again. And the mother looked at her and she said, yes, I know. Pain is difficult. When someone breaks your heart, it's an awful thing. It hurts so bad. But if you don't fall in love again, if you don't fall in love again, you will never know what living is is so security that woman who went through a hard hard life lesson and got her heart broken the man just tore her heart out ruined her life as she thought but she's got to get back on the horse and go after it again she's got to find love because if she doesn't find love she does not live that's what her mother said let me give you another story and this is one that i i i think impacted me more than anything else it probably impacted me more because I now have a, a little daughter, little Vivi. She's three and a half years old and I can envision this. So story starts like this. There was a dad and that dad had a ritual in the morning as I do, as many of you men probably do, even women. I don't know. We all probably have our rituals that we do in the morning. My ritual is the same every morning. I get up at 5 a.m. I go downstairs. It's dark. I turn one light on in the pantry just for that glow. I get the cats their food. It's kind of a ritual. I got everything down. It's the same thing every single day. I make my coffee while I'm doing that. I hear the coffee percolating the Nespresso machine purring, as I like to call it, as we relate it to the kitties eating. And then I make my oatmeal. I mix up my protein shake and I sit down and I hit play on an Earl Nightingale video. The strangest secret in the world, mastering the basics, success versus failure. 
That's my morning ritual. What's yours? Back to the story. So this father had a morning ritual and every morning he would get up really early before everybody else was up. Very familiar. And he would read the business section of the paper and he loved this. And he knew exactly how long it took him to read that. And he knew exactly how long everybody would sleep. Well, one morning, his little boy got up a little early and came downstairs and, and pulled the paper down from the father, which irritated the father because the father just wanted to do his ritual. And, oh, man, Ma, why are you up so early is what he wanted to say, but he didn't. And the, the son looked at his dad and said, Dad, Dad, I want to play. Can we play today? And the father thought about it and was like, well, actually, I have to work today. But son, tomorrow is Saturday. We can play all day tomorrow. And the son looked at his dad with this big smile and these big eyes. And he said, dad, yes, that would be unbelievable. Tomorrow is going to be the greatest day. We're just going to play all day. So the next day comes. The father knows he's got to get through his ritual because that's just what he does every morning. And he said, you know what? I'm going to get up a little early just in case. Junior wakes up early and he comes downstairs and he gets his coffee and he's reading the business section of the Saturday news. And all of a sudden his son is up even earlier because his son is so excited to experience this day, to go out there and literally play all day long. He's been thinking about this because his dad never really plays with him enough. And he comes down and his father sees him and his father's like, oh crap. And his mind's thinking, I, I didn't get through my thing. I want to just read this. So he thinks quickly. And he remembered in that newspaper, in that Saturday news, there was, there was a picture of the world. And he said, son, before we go outside and play, I've got a game I want to play. I want you to play this game. And here's what it is. He takes the, the picture of the world and he rips it all up and he puts it on the table, which is a glass table. And he says to his son, son, this is a puzzle. I want to put this puzzle together. And when you put this puzzle together, as soon as you're done, we'll go outside and we'll play. And the boy was challenged, very excited about this challenge. So he went into it. The father went back to reading his paper. And, and, and in what seemed like no time at all, the son pulled the paper down and again and said, Dad, I finished. And the father thought to himself, that's impossible. I tore that, that picture of the world up in so many different pieces. There's no way he put it together. But he looked down and there it was. The world was all put together. All the little pieces of that torn up world, you know, which was just a piece of the newspaper was all put together. And right there, he could see the world completed. But he was confused. He was so confused. He said, how is this possible? So he asked his son. He said, Junior, how did you, how did you do this? And the little boy, smiling with his big eyes, looked up at his dad and said, well, dad, it was really tough. It, and, and there was many times in the beginning that I almost gave up and a piece of the, the, the piece of the puzzle fell on the ground. And when I went down to pick that puzzle piece up, I looked up and I saw underneath through the glass table, what looked to be the silhouette or maybe a picture of a man. So all I did is I, I just put the man together. I just put the picture of the man together. And when I came back up from underneath the table, there it was, the world took shape. And the father thought to himself, that's amazing. And he said to his son, he said, son, that puzzle just taught you one of the most important lessons in life. And that lesson is when you put the man together, the world will always take shape. He put that paper down without finishing that new, that business section and him, him and his son went outside and played and had the best day ever because the man realized that's the secret of the world. But if you're, if the man isn't together, the world will never take shape. I tell you that story because I want you to really think about what I told you today in this episode, episode number 250, success is different for all of us. But success can only be had if you create it. And what is it? It's different for all of us. What is your worthy idea? What is your worthy idea that will change the world? What is your worthy idea that will change one boy's life, one daughter's life? What is it that you think about every single day? What is it that you dream about? All of us have a dream. 
And in order to have that dream, you got to put the man together. You got to chase that dream. You got to go after it. You got to create it. And that will be met with resistance. That will be met with scorn. That will be met with haters telling you that your idea sucks, that it's stupid, that you'll never do it, that it's a scam, it won't work. And if you ever conform to what they tell you your life should look like, just know that conformity results in failure. 100% of the time, you will become part of the 98%, part of the, the people that want security, part of the people that only travel the path most traveled. You will never, ever succeed because the world will never take shape because you never created it and you never went out with the idea that you were willing to give it all up for your worthy idea. I just want to preface that one thing I told you that failure is the person who never tries to succeed. And success is the person that strives, that attempts, that goes after their worthy idea, their goal, their dream, and never gives up and never listens to anybody else. Success or failure, which one's it going to be for you? That's a lot to take in. It really is. And I thought long and hard about this episode. I even took lots of notes, two pages of notes, because you need to be the one that's going to change the world, which means you need to be the 2%, which means you need to be the 2% that creates the solution to 98% of the world's problem. What problem are you going to solve in business? I run many businesses in business. Your sole goal is to create a solution for a problem. The bigger the problem, the bigger the wealth you will have, but you must create it. And creation will always result in failure. But failure is always just the lessons you needed to get to the next step, to get to that next level of your goal, the next level of your dream, the next piece of the puzzle that starts to put the man together. Because when the man is put together, the world will take shape and the world will be complete. Thank you for joining me for this monumental episode mile marker 250 i hope you got something from this i hope you think long and hard about this and i hope a bunch of you take this challenge that i'm going to give you here is the challenge i want you to start right now i want you to start writing out your perfect day every aspect of it not hocus pocus stuff not one or two pages i want you to think through every second of that day there's 24 hours of the day Maybe there's 10 of 12, 15 of those hours you're up. I want you to think through every hour that you're awake. And I want you to write out, physically write out your perfect day. That's the challenge. And I want you to comment below what it is you're going to create. How are you going to put the man together? And, and women, same thing. I'm sorry, it just fit that story because he, it was the father talking to his son. But same thing, put the woman together. What are you going to do? What are you going to create? What are you willing to give up? And the answer is always the same. What are you willing to give up? Say it. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up to live your perfect day every day? What are you willing to give up? If the answer is anything other than everything, you can't succeed. You got to be able to put it all on the line, folks. You got to be able to risk it all. Give up anything, anything to realize your dream. All I can tell you as we wrap this episode is it will always be worth it, no matter what the outcome. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Money School Podcast. And thank you for being part of 250 episodes. We'll see you on the next one.